every church that has the Henson singing to them. <laughs> Amen. Well, one of these days, there's going to be a hallelujah meeting, folks. We're going to be in that number. Hallelujah. We got a, we got a reading to shout tonight. We got a reason to sing. Praise God, our Redeemer lives. He sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you tonight. Glory to God. We don't have to have no doom and gloom day. Not when we got a Savior like Jesus tonight, who gave his life a ransom for you and I that we can have victory. Praise be to God. I heard a while ago, if you're going to be a Christian, walk like it. If you're going to be a Christian, act like it. If you're going to be a Christian tonight, then let's be one. Amen. Father, we just love you. We just come together tonight, Lord, to be in your house. We come to praise you. We come to worship you. Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening, Lord, that you have ordained. Lord, that you have orchestrated tonight. Lord, that we can come together, Lord, with one of mine and one accord. Lord, with having a spirit of unity, Lord, as they did in the days of the upper room. Father, we pray for the Pentecostal experience tonight. Father, we pray your Shekinah glory, Lord, to fall. Father, we pray for mighty healing tonight, Lord, upon your family, Lord, upon your people. Now we come against every attack, Lord, of the physical, of the spiritual, of the financial, of the emotional tonight. Lord, we take authority tonight. We take authority, Lord, over the enemy of his trickery, of his deceitfulness, Lord, of his attacks tonight. Father, we stand, Lord, in the realm of your presence. We come to stand, Lord, before a mighty God tonight. Lord, you've given us access, Lord, that we can come boldly to that throne of God. My Lord, Father, I thank you for the Holy Ghost tonight. I uh, thank you for the anointing, Lord, that is moving, Lord, that is touching right now. Father, we love you, Lord, and we just thank you that we'll have the victory tonight. Lord, we have, uh, Lord, what we ask for. Lord, we come believing tonight. Lord, we come believing for the utmost. Lord, we love you. We give you the praise mm -hmm. as you just come in a mighty way tonight. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Come on, praise team. Let's worship the Lord tonight. years ago, without in sin, I had no, no peace with death, down on my knees, in agony, I prayed to Jesus that he might let me through, and I never shall forget the day.
night that Brother Dustin was having another episode before she left. I think it's time we, the church, rise up and take authority yes. over the attack that's coming yes. against one of ours. Yes. This is one of God's yes. people. He said, you're the sheep of my pasture. Yes. I want us to stand together yes. tonight, whatever it may be tonight. Stand on your knees. Stand on your seat. I don't care what you do. We're going to stand in a place of authority tonight. Yes. We serve the risen Savior. Yes. We serve the risen Shekinah. We serve the God that heals. We serve the God that is tonight. I said we serve not the God that was, but we serve the God that is. I want you to dream with me right now as touching heaven. The little woman, the little widow woman. She said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can, my Lord, I need somebody to help me just reach out tonight and get a hold of the hem of that garment tonight. Let's take authority. Let's take authority over this attack. It's coming against Brother Dustin in Jesus' name. Let's pray with him right now. Father, we come. Lord, in the mighty name, Lord, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Father, I pray over the windows of heaven. Lord, reach down right now. Lord, we're going to touch Brother Dustin from the cut of his head, Lord, to the very soul of the saints. Lord, we come and you said, draw now with me.
Father, we stand on holy ground. Father, we stand on the word of God. Lord, de 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 declaring the word of God. Declaring tonight, Lord, that we are the victorious tonight, God. We are the mighty army. Lord, we're filled with the baptized with the anointing of the Holy Ghost tonight. Lord, I thank you tonight for the spirit of God. Lord, that is going to brought down. Lord, that's bringing healing. Lord, healing the oppressed. Lord, healing tonight the disease. Lord, healing those that have infirmities. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord, for who you are. Lord, I'm praying that the mighty arm of God, Lord, be exposed and be revealed tonight. Lord, we're coming against the spirits of darkness. Lord, we come against the spirits of sickness and disease. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus tonight. Lord, we plead to declare the power, Lord, the power of the blood of Jesus. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you tonight. Lord, we claim it right now. We take authority. Lord, and we receive. We we receive the promises of God. Lord, we receive the benefit. Lord, we receive the benefits, Lord, of healing and forgiveness. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We give you all the praise. And we give you all the glory for it in Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a hang up of praise tonight. And exalt and exalt the mighty name of Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. I can feel the mighty Holy Ghost in this place tonight. God has moved upon people. I believe that with all my heart. When I talked to the Lord about what I should bring for Mother's Day, he brought me this story. And you will find that in Exodus 2, 1 through 10. Jochebed is the story of Jochebed. Jochebed was Moses' mother. And I really didn't realize how come he had given me this. But it's so close to home. And I will tell you as we go on. Being a mother isn't for the faint of heart. Jochebed, a finely drawn portrait of a mother with faith. Jochebed had a courageous faith, a sensible faith, a sensible faith with rewards. A mother's ultimate purpose is to instill in her child the knowledge of faith and love for God. I think mothers are some of the most underappreciated people in the world. How many are with me? Okay. On this Mother's Day, I like to remind everyone to be good to their mothers and appreciate them more. But today's message is not about how to be a good, good to your mother. Today's message is about a mother who had to make some hard choices for the welfare of her son. It will require some tough decisions Decisions that are risky and heart-wrenching. Decisions that require lots of faith. I like for us to reflect on the story of a woman who is mentioned only a few times in Scripture. Yet, despite her low profile, she provides a finely drawn portrait of a mother with faith. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. He was Jochebed. Her, her was Jochebed. She was Moses' mother. You know that a baby at that, at that age is going to cry and it's going to holler. But how the Lord kept that child from doing all that is amazing to me. You see, that right there tells me that God can do anything. Yes, amen. Nothing is too difficult for my God to do. The nation in Israel had been in Egypt for almost 400 years. They grew and prospered there. But before long, they became a tree to the re re region Pharaoh. Pharaoh forced them into slavery. He commanded the Hebrews midwives to murder the newborn sons of the Hebrew women as they were given birth. When he discovered that he couldn't rely on the midwives because they feared God more than him, are there women here 
that fear more God than men. Amen. He, he tried another approach. He told his people to stay on the lookout for Hebrew babies. If they saw one, they were to throw him in the Nile and watch him drown. But you see, that Nile River just wasn't a river. It had alligators in there. Okay? I think some... Can you imagine living with such a fear when I think of the times when Jochebed was called to be a mother? I think some of some mothers today, I think of mothers in parts of Africa who face the re very real prospect of having their son taken from their arms to be trained as children for soldiers. And that's happening today. They take those children in a small age and they use them in an army in Africa. In the dangerous world in which we fa she found herself, Jochebed stands out because she did what she could to save her child. Then when she could no more, she depended totally on the faithfulness of God. She was a model of faith. First of all, Jochebed's faith was courageous. Listen to what the writer of Hebrews says about her. By Moses' faith, parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw that he was an, no ordinary child. Though the king said to all the male Hebrew babies had to be thrown into the Nile, Jochebed, jo Jochebed and her husband disobeyed the king and hid Moses. You see, she disobeyed the king. That's a key word. Do you obey God or do you obey man? Okay? I believe that we're supposed to obey God because we are to fear God because he holds our future in his hands. It says, <clears throat> but often think of faith as passive. This whole idea of let go and let God. But real faith is an active thing. Faith sometimes calls us to do risky things. I think of mothers who have been unable to conceive but have seen that an opportunity to adopt children who might otherwise have spent their lives in an orphan. That's a courageous act of faith. I think of mothers who are married to unbelieving, hus unbelieving husbands but sometimes defy those husbands in order to expose their children to the truth of God's word. And there is mothers out there that if the father, and I, I say this because I know somebody that's very close to me, that he doesn't believe in um, ordained religion. So because of that, my, the, the mother's children and the mother, they don't go to church because he doesn't believe in that. But I believe that God's going to turn that around for that family. Because my God can do anything. I think a mother who stand up to a teenage son or daughter saying no to something when all of the other mothers say yes. How many of you have done that? I was a real strict mom with my daughter and with my son. But at a young age, my parents decided they could raise him. So I gave him power of attorney. I said, don't call me. If, if he hits you, I don't want to hear about it. You want to be his parent. You do what you think you got to do. But with my daughter, I learned. And I was very hard on her. You know. But you know what? I thank God. And she thanked me years later because she's the woman she is today. Because of my instructions to her. It says, I think of mother who choose to give up. A career so they can stay home with their children when everyone around them say that's crazy <laughs> what gives these mothers the courage to act in such a way that is that they fear God more than they fear man they want to please God there it is they want to please God more than they want to please their friends or their children or even their husbands and they trust God they trust that as they, they are obedient to what he's calling them to do, 
in the face of threatening circumstances, he'll take care of them and their children. It says, after three months of hiding her baby, she saw a handwriting on the wall. She made a little wicker basket, covered it with tar and pitch to make it a float, put it in the reeds on the banks of the Nile. It is interesting that the word used for basket is the same used for Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark was covered with tar and pitch just like this one. Both Noah and Moses were placed in the ark, which is not a very safe environment. The Nile had crocodiles in it. At three months, Moses was completely helpless in a river filled with crocodiles. But I want you to notice that Jochebed was not careless about this. She was sensitive. She didn't send him floating down the river. She placed him among the reeds along the banks of the Nile. This was a place where women congregate. It was kind of like placing a baby on the steps of a hospital today. She also didn't just put him in the Nile and wave goodbye and saying, have a nice life, Moses. She had Moses' older sister stand at a distance to find out what happened to him. If Jochebed herself had stood by the reeds watching and waiting, it would have been obvious who she was. But Moses' sister made a good spy. When Moses was discovered in the Nile, his sister offered to find a Hebrew woman <laughs> to nurse him. And the plan fell into place. You see, Jochebed was clever, okay, in her planning. Part of being sensitive Sensible is knowing how to improvise on the spot. Consider the story of one woman that I met at the beginning of a daughter's wedding ceremony. She was to light one of the candles, not realizing the potential hazard, she got too close and set her arctic, 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 arctic nail on fire dry acrylic now on fire, trying not to ruin her daughter's big day, she calmly lit the candle with the flaming nail like a, glunce, a gunslinger with his at the six shooter and blew it out. Needless to say, her blackened nail was a talk of the reception. But how many mamas would do that? I know I would do anything for my daughter the day she gets married. I know that. Uh, it says, for some women, that is a decision that requires enormous faith and foresight and fierce love. I also think of mothers who would love to be a stay-at-home mom, but the family finances won't allow it. They find ways to make it work that are best for their kids. They find a way to work from home, or they have a godly aunt or grandmother provide child care. As Moses floated along the banks of the Nile, the daughter of Pharaoh arrived with her maidens. The text says that she saw the basket and had brought it to her. She opened it and she saw the child crying. She had pity on him because he was a Hebrew and could just as well be dead. It was a standard, a standard procedure for wealthy women to hire a wet nurse to feed a child until he was weaned. And the wet nurse would be the legal guardian during, during those first years. So at just the right time, Moses' sister moved in and made an offer to help her. She then went to find Jacob, who not only got to raise her child, but was paid to do it. Amen. You see, my God is a, is a big God. He not only put her to take care of her own son, but he also said, I'm going to get them to pay you for taking care of your own son. You know, she didn't know what was going to happen to her son, but she knew that she had to save him regardless what they, you know, she, she thought in her head. But she had such a faith. And I know a woman 
that's been gone 25 years, which is my mother. And I'm going to tell you, that's why it hit home to me. I have four siblings, Sonny, Francis, Adela, and Martha. They were born in Mexico. My parents were born in the United States. And after they got married, Mexico was given free land away. So they went back to Mexico. But one night, my daddy's father got drunk and he bid the whole land for, um, for uh, they were playing cards and, and he lost the land. So my daddy didn't have no other choice but to come back to the United States by himself. And when he came back, he found work. So he went back to Mexico and told my mom, I said, Mom, we got to go. She said, I, I can't leave me and my babies. I got my four babies. He said, you're going to have to leave them. And we're going to have to go back to the United States. The story is that my grandma took my four siblings under her wing for three months while my daddy and my mama were in the United States. My daddy had to pay a coyote. You know what a coyote is? No, it's not a coyote. It's a man that you pay to cross illegals. And they put him in a canoe, okay? Home, to sit home to marry. And my, my dad said that Adela was the youngest one. And she would cry because she was scared. My daddy tell Martha, quiet your sister down. Because if not, they're going to catch us. And my mama, she had that faith that her children were going to cross that river. Regardless of what happened, they were going to make it to the United States. And you know what? They did. They crossed that river. But as they grew, you know, they had to choose between the United States and, and, and Mexico. So they had to go back and they had to choose the United States flag. But this story really hit home because I can just see my mama, just like Jacobin, with such a, a trust and a faithful heart, heart for her God. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, my mother was a Catholic. But I also believe that she believed in a God. Because she wouldn't have allowed those, my siblings to come across that river. And at that time, the river ran high, high. Nowadays, you can see the river, and it's not as high as it was back years ago, you know. But that faith that my mama had brought my siblings here to the United States. It says that Moses spent his youth in Pharaoh's court where he learned law, mathematics, and even the art of war. And then it says Moses led two million people through a desert, putting all of these disciplines to work. You see, you notice that God is never mentioned once in this passage, but still, <laughs> we see him in the background working. Through all this passage, I didn't see God's plan on there. But I know he was working. There are things mothers can do, but ultimately they have to leave it in God's hands. That's the hardest thing, letting go. A mother's love never changes, but parenthood is a constant process of letting go. Letting your child make mistakes. Letting your teenager learn some things the hard way. Letting your adult child follow God's call, even if it means he or she will live a thousand miles away. Mothers take to heart. He'll use your courage, your faith to accomplish his purpose. He's working behind the scenes to accomplish his purpose in your children's lives. He will use you, but it's not all up to you. One of the interesting things about this passage is the prominent role woman with motherly instincts playing the story. Jochebed saw that Moses was beautiful. 
Pharaoh's daughter saw the basket, the child crying and had pity on him. Moses' daughter stood in the wings to know or notice what would happen and when to act. All of this foreshadowed what God would soon do for his people. Later in chapter 2, it is God who looks upon his people who are suffering. We're told in verse 25 that God saw, same word, the son of Israel, and God took notice. The same word of them. So you could say it's the motherly instinct of God which caused him to move forward to save his people. And it was God's motherly instincts to see us as worthy of delivery from our utterly helpless state to the death, burial, and resurrection of his own son. Someone once turned to a full-time mom and said, And what is it that you do, my dear? She responded, I am socializing to... I can't say that word. But I don't think I'm supposed to do that because I didn't, I didn't put it in there right. So I'm going to go down. Mothers, your ultimate purpose is to foster a courageous, sensible faith that will instill your children a knowledge of a faith in and a love for his God who sees and knows your child's deepest need for salvation. But don't worry. It's not all up to you. God is parenting with you. You see, God gave us. Now, I'll rephrase that. God loaned us our children. They're not ours. Our children are not our children. He loaned them to us. And he had that much faith in Mary to raise two children. I'm telling you out there who's listening, that son, that daughter, if you've been ungrateful to your mom, you better love your mama. Because one day she won't be here. And who are you going to turn to? Unless you know God, that is the only one you can turn to. But I pray that those sons and daughters love their mother with a, a, a heart like Jesus. Because Jesus loves us unconditionally. And maybe it wasn't a lot, but that's what God gave me. And like I said, you know, it, it really hit home. Because, you know, one of my sisters, well, three of them already gone, my mom and my daddy. And I'm headed back out. I want you to pray, because I'm headed back out next week. My brother's not doing good at all, and I'm going to help, you know. But I know, without a shadow of a doubt, that they met Jesus along the road, and that they know Jesus. And right now, I know that all of my siblings are in heaven with him, and I know my brother is going that way. I believe it with all my heart, brothers and sisters. Now, I just want to say I love you, and God bless you. Thank you, Sister Mary. What a good God we serve tonight. What a good God who watches over us, protects us, in every area. I was thinking of the song tonight. You may guys have something different. I don't know. But I was thinking of the song. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Aren't you glad for God's loving kindness tonight? Now, let's just lift our hands toward heaven. If you've got a need tonight. If you've got a need and you feel like you're a castaway. You may feel like you're an outcast. If you feel like your life may be in a shipwreck. If you feel like you've been abandoned. If you feel like that you just you're all alone, I don't let me tell you something that God's love and kindness, whoo, my Lord, I feel this. God's love, his mercy, the Bible says his love never fails. His love never fails. His love, my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost confirming somebody tonight. He's he's wanting to intercede. Just 
just just take your hands off. You've been trying to fix it, but if you'll just take your hands off of it right now, allow the Holy Ghost to just move him. Allow the Holy Spirit to just step in right now. He said, be still. Be still and know that I am God. My Lord, right now, if you'll just lift your hand toward heaven and just begin to praise him right now. Let the Holy Spirit begin to comfort you. Let it begin to strengthen you. Let it begin to renew your walk. My Lord, let it begin to renew your Sing it for me right there. Hallelujah. That's it right there. That's it right there. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to reach out and just touch him right now. Let him touch you. faithful he loves you with a fervent love he loves you so much he cares about you tonight he cares about you in your lonely times in your down times and he sees your affliction he knows what you're going he knows your circumstances tonight but the god we serve is real the god we serve you may be going through a real problem but god is a real my lord god's a real god god is a real god and he loves you he's embracing you holding you into his bosom tonight He's giving you hope. He's giving you peace. That old song says, I'm sheltered in the arms of God. My, you couldn't be in a safer place tonight than being sheltered by God. He's a, he watches over, your, watches over you tonight, my Lord. I hope you've had a wonderful, happy Mother's Day. I hope you got to spend it with, with family. I hope you got to spend it with friends or whatever may be the case. But more importantly, I'm thankful that you got to spend it with the Yellow Assembly. I'm thankful that you got to be a part of this and come to church today. Thank you for taking that time coming to church Sunday morning and Sunday night. I pray God's blessings upon you this week that you'll be prosperous. Whatever you put your hand to will be prosperous and be successful. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Father, we just love you. Lord, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, that we've heard this morning and tonight. Father, let it be an encouragement. Lord, let it bring us a hope tonight. Lord, that truly you use mothers, Lord, to help us in our lifetime. Lord, to instruct us. Lord, to guide us. Lord, to help give us a teaching. Lord, to teach us the ways of God. Lord, to, to teach us to fear God. Lord, we thank you for mothers tonight. Lord, that raise us up. Lord, that nurture us. Lord, that sacrifice their time. Lord, and more importantly, they, they show us what real love is. Lord, and we thank you for the moms in our life. Like, God, we thank you for our wives. We thank you for our families tonight. Lord, we ask your blessing that you surround us. Lord, continue to lead us and guide us. Give us direction. Lord, I pray that you'll keep us this week from all harm and danger. Lord, in all of our goings, we just pray that you'll go ahead of us. Lord, go before us, making a way. Lord, we love you. Know that we're safe and secure in your arms. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, food bank tomorrow. If you'd like to come out and help with that about 11 o'clock, we can sure use the help. we got a big amount, kind of large amount of food coming in. Thank God for that. So anyway, Lord bless you. Lord love you. We'll see you guys Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Come out, bring somebody with you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.